Hey everybody and welcome to episode 10 of The Real Show where we're real people giving you real content on real estate. So super excited to be here tonight. We are trying a new format that we've never tried before. We're on Facebook Live instead of YouTube Live which is a new thing for us. Absolutely. We're also in the same room today which is something that's also different. It's true. The reason that we've done this is first of all Facebook Live makes it a little bit more user friendly for people. Uh, and at the same time, you know, being here in the same room together gives us an opportunity to have a little bit more back and forth banter. Yeah. So uh, today, you know, we're super excited to bring this episode. Last week, episode nine was our first episode back after the holidays. We hope everybody is settled in and enjoying the new year. Um, Last week we talked a little bit about just what our goals were yeah. for, for the upcoming year. Yeah, like our mission statement and what we were going to bring to you guys. And it was a lot about, you know, um, topics that aren't really talked about or that are kind of avoided um, by the industry because, you know, people get upset if we mention certain things. Uh, we're here to inform you. So it doesn't matter who gets upset. We're here to help you, uh, keep you informed, give you good advice, give you good value. That way you watch and that way you know what's going on when it's your turn to get involved in a process of, of buying. So real quick, this is a new format for us. Uh, if you could just yes or no in the comments right now, can you hear us okay? Can you see us okay? We're kind of, we don't know if, if this is actually working. We think that it is, but if you could just let us know in the comments below, yes or no, can you hear us? So in today's episode, we are going to talk about an interesting topic. Alfredo, I'll let you introduce the topic. Yeah, so we're gonna be talking about uh, how you know that your interest is best taken care of by your real estate agent, by your mortgage agent. So negotiating with your realtor and your, your mortgage agent to make sure that you have the best quality of service and you're being taken care of to the highest potential. And yeah, so uh, again, we're, we're just making sure that you know your best interest, there's so much competition out there right now. There is. And so why not take advantage of a couple of these pro tips? So um, Alfredo, why don't you start it off? What, what are a couple things that people can talk about uh, with their prospective mortgage agent to make sure that their best interests are in mind, both financially and, and in other ways. In other ways. I think, okay, so there's three topics uh, or three points that I want to say, uh, and they're kind of like two to each point. Um, so number one uh, would be full-time. Like is, is the agent you're working with full-time or part-time? And some people say that doesn't matter, but in reality, I think it matters a lot. I think you should be, you should be participating full time because it's it's something that you know you could be needed in the middle of the day at the beginning of the day at the end of the day after hours and if you're doing another job or you're occupied with other things you might lose some opportunities uh, you might lose the time to talk with your uh, with your client you know maybe they're on a break at like 11:45 but you're on your your first job and you're not a full-time agent you won't be able to reach and make those connections when you really need to or even with the realtor that's working with the agent right um, so I, I'm not knocking on the part-timers. I'm not saying you don't have the capability or the knowledge, or, or uh, but it's just if you're full-time, you're more dedicated and you're probably going to be able to be more keen on keeping your client's interest above and beyond. Um, number two, accessibility. I think in our jobs, like you said, there's a lot of competition. And I think what kind of feeds you out of everyone else is accessibility, you know, by email, text message, phone call. Um, your range. Uh, fortunately, it's like a 24 hour service now because we are accessible through those means. So, you know, if if they're working on a deal that's running at 11 o'clock at night and they got to ask a question to the mortgage agent, well, I'm there by phone or by text. And if it's a deal where, you know, you're running into late hours, you should be able to compliment your client if they call and say, hey, you know what, this is getting a little late. Do I have your support? If I got to call you at midnight, is that OK? And if those are one offs, that's great. But you've got to make sure that you're accessible more than less to your clients um, by any stream. Because well, I've got to tell you, like, huge. from a real estate perspective, like yeah. sometimes we get into deals that are 10, 11, 12 at night, oh. you know, and we don't have time to, to figure things out. It's sort of a make a decision now yeah. type of thing. Yeah. And it's really annoying when, you, you know, when they can't get a hold of their mortgage agent. You know, sorry, we have to, the bank opens at 9 tomorrow. So yeah. that's when we have to call. So, um that's pretty rough. That's definitely not cool. And so that's why. That's why you want to interview your, your agents to make sure that they're accessible to you as much as they need to be. Especially if you're one of those people that aren't going to be doing this this offer and, and 
you know, searching for homes until after work hours because that's that's kind of key, right? Um, point number two, lenders. Uh, lenders. So when you talk to your mortgage agent, you want to find out how many lenders they work with and you want like an honest answer. If they say like we work with an endless amount of lenders, they could, but chances are that they're, they're in the 30s uh, and of those lenders, certain are for A, B, and private options. Uh, because a mortgage broker has diversity. If you have Bruce Credit, it might be in the Bs. If you have every all your ducks in a row, you're going to be in the As. If there's a lot of issues at hand, you're going private. So they have to have a range of lenders, and like a diversity in their profile of lenders, so that no matter which case scenario, they have the knowledge and the ability to see what options you need and which lender to go to. So is that a, a added value for a mortgage broker versus going to one of the big banks where really like it, at a big bank, it, it's just one lender, right? Yeah, absolutely. At a big bank, you're at that one big bank. They do the one credit check and it's a yes or no. And they're right. not very flexible at all, like not hitting up the banks, but the policies of the banks are very stern and it's one way or not. And if there is a decline there, they don't really kind of tell you, okay, go see, you know, like these are your other options. They don't really have other options to offer. And that's where a uh, mortgage broker is huge uh, right. because we do have those options to help you carry through with your purchase or your refinance or whatever it is. Right. So that's a huge thing. And also is um, the fine print of a mortgage. You know, at the bank, you know, your repayment is your lump sum payments are so much and you can increase your payment by so much and with those other lenders that mortgage uh, brokers use those 32 lenders there's different options not every mortgage is as i guess have that many options as another like b lenders are very more are much more strict than a lenders a lenders will have that you know 20 percent lump sum repayment per calendar year or increase your payment by so much or portable or it's assumable and so um, when you're talking to a broker, you want to make sure that they have that knowledge and that experience. You know, you want to ask how long have they been there because you want those options to be fully disclosed to you before you make a commitment and sign documents to be with the lender for a period of time. Right. Right. That's that's huge. So I guess you're saying what you're saying is when you're interviewing potential mortgage agents, you should ask how many lenders do you work with? And if my option A doesn't work out, what do I do? And what are my options from there? Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And, and somebody with knowledge will be like, oh, OK, well, we'll go this route and here's your plan B and here's a plan C. Right. Or if there's no plan B or C, they got to let you know up front that, hey, it's either going to happen this way or we're going back to the drawing board and making a plan for the next six months, year, however long it takes so that they can get to that point. Right. Right. And the last bit is is rates. Everybody is pretty pinchy on the rates. You know, you have to know a mortgage broker is negotiating for you. So we shop for you. So there's there's mortgages that have really low rates that don't come with uh, a lot of good options. And there's mortgages that have a little bit of a higher rate, but they're still really competitive, but give you all the options in the world. Now, can those uh, can you negotiate a rate further down? If if you are rate shopping at that kind of aggressive like aggressive level, um, you got to understand that advice sometimes is more important than rate. Uh, but if you have a rate from a lender and you're keen on working with that mortgage agent, let them know. And if you have something in writing, great. Sometimes we can take those rates and we can let the lenders that we work with know and say, hey, you know, we're we're fighting against this lender. The client wants to stay with us through the relationship we've built can you knock it down sometimes there's room for to buy down rates sometimes they'll negotiate the rate down it all depends every situation every case is different so it's by case by it's a case by case but there's always an option there so you know these are questions that you want to ask i know sometimes they could be like a little bit intimidating or you feel that it's it's a bit um it's just it's super sensitive and it is but those mortgage agents that want to work with you should not have a problem answering any of these questions because you should set the you know you should set the standard on how your relationship is going to be because this is one of the the biggest decisions you have to do right i Absolutely. mean absolutely on your end yeah. like what would you say are, are kind of the biggest things so to look at? Before we get into how to get the best deal from a, a realtor and how to make sure that your best interests are in mind, real quick to everybody who's watching, 
you know, as we discussed in the beginning of the video, we're now doing Facebook Live versus YouTube Live. Huge. Are you guys enjoying this format better? For those of you who have watched our previous episodes on YouTube, is, is this format easier for you? Is it better? Yes or no in the comment section. So anyways, how to, getting back to the real estate side of things and how to make sure that your best interests are being looked after, yeah. the first thing that I always suggest to people when they ask me this question is unless you've got a great past relationship with somebody, maybe you're related or you have an obligation to somebody, you really should, especially when you're selling your house, you really should interview a few different agents. I'm totally okay when people interview me along with other agents right. when it comes to selling their house. You should look at at least two agents. If you only talk to one, you, you don't know what you're missing. You don't know what the other opportunities are. You don't know what the other marketing plans are. You've only got one look at things. So. Unless you've had, you know, done two, three, four, five transactions with a particular agent, you should always talk to at least two agents before you end up signing a document with them to go forward, whether it's on the buying side or on the listing side. The next thing you should always look at and, and ask your realtor or prospective realtor about, is, and this really applies to when you're selling your house, is really digging deep into their marketing strategies. So, you know, a lot of agents in you know in our market they rely heavily in their listing presentation on you know when we list your house it's going to go on the century 21 site and it's going to go on a thousand websites across the world and it's going to go here and it's going to go there yeah. and those marketing tactics are what i call the freebie tactics every agent at every brokerage has access to most of these um systems systems i mean it's not a benefit Going with me, it's not a benefit that your listing is going to be on Realtor.ca. It's normal. going to be on Realtor.ca with every agent. Right. So you really want to dig deep into what their paid advertising strategy is. First of all, are they in tune with what's actually working in today's market? Second of all, are they willing to actually market your property in a way that other agents aren't? So this, again, is the benefit to interviewing a few agents, yeah. you get to see on an individual basis what their marketing strategy is, and then you can start comparing them. Marketing you know, is one thing, particularly in a seller's market like this, the, the problem that people have is they yeah. say, well, anybody, I can put a for sale sign up in my front yard, and I can put it on MLS and it's going to sell, but really a, a great marketing strategy is the difference between selling a couple thousand dollars under asking price versus selling ten, twenty thousand dollars over asking price. Sure. So a good marketing strategy can really build up a lot of hype on your property. It, it's got endless benefits. So that's something that I would definitely really grill agents on when you're meeting with them. Right. Uh, what's your marketing strategy? And and what's the what are the things that come free with your brokerage? What are the things that come free with your real estate board? And what are you actually paying for above and beyond pictures and videos and stuff like that? Like, where are you actually spending money to advertise this property? And then the last thing, again, is it, similar to, to what Alfredo was saying, is you really want to hire, and I'm sorry to the part-time agents out there. I, I have a lot of love for you. Me it too. Is, it's not easy getting into real estate. It's a, you know, it's not an easy transition for people. So there are people that unfortunately do have to work at their old job while they're getting into real estate. And, you know, if you're one of those people, don't let this discourage you. Right. But the reality is that if I'm going to be selling my house, I, I want somebody that's full time. I want somebody that's a pro. Um, somebody who's selling a lot of houses effectively right. doesn't Dedicated. have another job. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. It's it's the reality. It's people who are really crushing it and doing a great job for their clients are doing real estate full time and, and they're selling mortgages full time on your end. Absolutely. Absolutely. It has it's not it's and again, it's not knocking them, but it's just that's what we do all the time. That's what we're focused on. And and that's why we may have an edge on the part timers. If you're a part timer that's working your way up to full time, great. I mean, I went from where I used to work and I just kinda dove in. It was it was kinda terrifying. But I learned really quick, and I know what I know now. Now the knowledge is up there. I have a great team that works and supports for me. And, and you know, maybe that's another question that they should ask us is if for whatever reason there's an emergency or we're not around or we're on holidays in the middle of searching for a home. Or, What's your support system like? Exactly, right? Yeah. Like you need to know that, oh, God, if Alfredo goes missing, 
am I SOL? Do I have to go find someone else? In my world, I'm lucky enough that I work with a brokerage that if something goes wrong uh, on my end and I have to be gone for a while, I have other agents that will cover for me. The broker of record will be there. He'll take a call for me. Um, but you won't be left stranded. And I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, and I think the overall crux of this whole video and this this whole topic is that, uh, you know, whatever market you're in, I, I don't know, but it, in our market right now, there's a ton of realtors and a ton of mortgage agents. Yeah. There's no excuse for hiring a bad one. So you need to make sure that you do your homework. As a buyer or a seller, you've got, you hold all the power right now. You've got the leverage. Uh -huh. You get to sit back and interview two or three or four people on the mortgage side and the real estate side Absolutely. and and say, what are you going to do for me? You know, what are you going to do that's different than everybody else? Yeah. Because, you know, what when you have that option, why not exercise it? So, you know, to wrap up, we're, again, the next few videos, the next few topics, the point of this is to really dive into some of the things that people aren't talking about. Um, you know, the first few episodes were some really core basic things that we wanted to talk about, yeah. some educational points on real estate. Um, but now we're going to try and dive into some topics that are a little bit more uh, risque. Yeah, absolutely. They're topics that if, like, example, you're interviewing us, you shouldn't be shy or there shouldn't be any fear in asking those questions to your, your professional experts because they should be glad to answer them. They shouldn't be offended. If they're offended, then maybe there's something there that that should give you like the, ooh, maybe this isn't a good you know relationship um, because there's nothing worse than at the ninth hour when you have a mortgage approved and somebody says, oh no, you could get that. Now you're running to somebody else and trying to get a new deal put in place so that you're not getting ripped off or because someone didn't understand what you actually needed. You need to you need to know that your needs are going to be fulfilled. We talked about this in one of our previous episodes. It's It comes down yeah. to doing your homework. So yeah. again, thank you everybody for tuning in. I'm just looking here. We had more people watch this than we have on most of our live streams. So I guess by that, I'm going to say that Facebook Live so far has been a success. Yeah. I don't know. We might sign off and find out that nobody heard a word we said. <laughs> oh, I don't God. know. So anyways, if you guys could just give us a, a quick like, we'd appreciate that. If you could put in the comment section, the real thing that we're trying to find out in this episode is coming down to a format. Yeah. Do you prefer this format to our previous episodes? If you haven't uh, seen our previous episodes, make sure you check out our YouTube channel mm -hmm. and watch them. But if you have, we would love to know how this um compares yeah and so anyways we're gonna sign off for now we're gonna end it we got the good news well we think it's good news um that uh jose batista oh yeah i think he's he's uh he's gonna sign with the jays he did for one so, year yeah uh, one year so we're excited about that we're going to end it with the bat flip <laughs> and uh thank you guys for watching we'll be back on next tuesday at 7 p.m take Talk care